As the average concert grower gets older and older, classical music continues to struggle for relevance in a market in a country that seems to value it less every day. New York City, at one point the mecca for classical music radio stations, had only three classical stations 15 years ago and now has only one full time. Perhaps it's just a matter of education. David Dubal, program and music director for two decades at WNCN, the 24-hour classical music station that switched over to rock in 1993, has written a new book called The Essential Canon of Classical Music from North Point Press. In it, he discusses what composers are worthy and explains why. Mr. Dubell is an acclaimed pianist in his own right, a professor at the Juilliard School, and I'm very pleased to welcome him to New York and Company. Hello. Leonard, thank you for having me here. I'm you delighted. You wrote that you were trying to address two audiences at once with this book. Mm -hmm. Uh, The two audiences, um, I must tell you at this moment, I have forgotten which they were. Okay, well, people more or less new to classical music and those familiar with it, but who could use the book as a reference as well as a lifetime listening plan. Yeah, Leonard, it's, to not joke, it really is, is written on at least 10 different levels. The level of the composer within the society, because it's a uh, chronological, not alphabetical book. So it it should show the sweep of uh, the canon of this amazing, um, probably one of civilization's highest glories, the, the art of music at its best. And it goes from a show to uh, people that are still alive, that uh, I believe, it's a leap of faith, of course, but that they will enter the canon like a Beethoven or Mozart, Handel, and so forth. Of course, there's always debate over sure. who gets in, who oh, doesn't. Oh, someone will say, my goodness, Dubal, why didn't you have so-and-so John in? Adams, yes, William John Schumann. Adams, William yeah. Schumann. Or when you claim that Janicek's operas are the equal of Puccini's. Uh, after all, Janicek's uh, operas are rarely <laughs> performed, and Puccini is... And one of the most commonly performed composers in the world. Yes, and Janáček's music, uh, uh, his great operas coincided with those of uh, Puccini. And the problem is only one of language. No, no one learns Czech. And uh, even when he was sung, Janufa was sung often in uh, German, it is nothing compared to the sound of Czech, which was the language of his dreams. He loved it so. If he was an Italian, we would hear him just as frequently. But you did wind up with 236 composers featured yes. in this book. So yes. this is a, a big list. Um, could, could you tell us about the structure of the book? Yes, the structure is the great composers, the canon composers uh, of the first order, Um, have a long essay, and the essay begins with a characteristic uh, sentence that they themselves write uh, showing their character, and then I give a biographical critical essay with the biography going to really quite quite a detail and and certainly uh, a a true correctness at this time. Uh, Then there's throughout quotes by the composer and some of the best things ever said about them because I'm very big on uh, the best quotes. Why should I write something when someone did it so wonderfully that I've always loved? Uh, that then ends... And it also tells us what people thought about these people at different times throughout the history Yes, for instance, uh, w- uh, in my Mozart, uh, I, um, I end with a magnificent uh, quote, I think, uh, about Mozart by Saul Bellow who uh, loves Mozart very much, and of course it's off his field, and I try very much because I've uh, always understood in my reading that the literary people of the world have said some of the best things about other arts. But it's also interesting to note that Mozart, Bach before him, was forgotten for a period of time. From the Romantic era on, uh, we have had a certain amount of continuity. I think Beethoven has always been appreciated. And the Romantic Age is the longest section in this book. Is that because there were more composers during the time or because the composers were more noteworthy? They're in the canon. It doesn't mean that John Dowland was not one of the great songwriters of all time and equal to Schubert. But the uh, the essential canon shows us that uh, we love the the era from uh, Mozart's uh, maturity and Haydn's until the uh, end of uh, Verdi's life and so forth, and then the post romantics. We're hooked on that for many many reasons. One of them that is the the fact is is structurally they're tremendously sophisticated, and from Bach to through the nineteenth century the. Uh, 
the concept of tonality itself, which is central to uh, the greatest works, uh, became most um, uh, totally integrated into the forms of music, the, the great forms, the string quartet, the opera, the uh, uh, symphony, and so forth. For classical music lovers, there are some disturbing trends in radio these days. For example, the general consensus of classical radio consultants is that the audience doesn't care who wrote the work you're playing or what it's called. They only care how it sounds. Well, what the audience uh, is told not to care about these days through the way it's manipulated is the reason. Uh, of course, people are very interested in uh, um Everything a composer says, we, we base our, our lives on the heroic figures of the past. We love to, uh, that's one of the reasons we have this ridiculous celebrity consciousness at this time of people that are absolutely non-existent instead of, uh, except on celluloid, and here we have tremendous figures of the past that we could have as role models. And yet, if you listen to classical radio, you, you hear very, no quartets, vocalists, organ, or chamber music, unaccompanied instrumental works, uh, out with anything that's over 10 minutes long. Seven to 10 minutes is the ideal. Yeah, and that's a great shame because we have lost, well, we're historyless, first of all. This is a shame. We have many things to catch up with. Uh, as Gore Vidal said, it's not, uh, the 20th century is not what we have uh, um, won, it's what we have lost. And there's so much education to catch up with, and that's why this book is written. I think that it will... It will certainly change the perception of a lot of people who say, mm, I didn't get this. I was born in the uh, rock and roll age. My children didn't get it. Education in school refuses to grapple with the arts. And the time has come that we are actually in a fight for Western civilization. Well, I don't mean to pick on you because uh, I think this book is wonderful. Thank but you. don't you bear some of the responsibility from the time that you were at WNCN, which had its fans, but also alienated serious classical music f uh, fans in the 1980s when it try to go after that younger audience with just the sorts of things. Yes, I was well, you know, about. you're talking to the wrong man. You're, these were my enemies at <laughs> WNC. Mario Matza, the station's director of programming, he said, we are first and foremost a business, second a radio station, and third a station that plays classical music. That well, you know, you I mean, when I walked in there, he saw the devil. I mean, I was there many years before him, and I had to leave because of the very fact of this kind of Philistinism, which had been perpetrated on radio to such a degree that that is why we don't have that classical station. I want to say without modesty and really in the sense of its truth, the day I left in 1990, I said to myself, I wonder, because there are always secret forces that keep things alive or not. And I said, I wonder how long WNCN can actually last with me, because I was programming still a very, very uh, complex format within the broadcast uh, system of uh, this this uh, degraded format that I had to work with with the man you were just discussing. And yet, that's the way much classical music programming is today. Yes, everywhere. yes, we he had his influence. QXR does it to some degree. Yes, yes. And recently, there's been a debate in the New York Times about whether Arnold Schoenberg is at fault for everything that's gone wrong in the classical in classical music. Uh, there, there were articles that suggested that he is the person oh. who turned off audiences. Leonard. Poor Arnold Schoenberg. Poor man of genius who was very much a traditionalist as a German composer uh, in the wake of uh, um, Parsifal. There was nothing for a, a genius of that rank to do but to figure out a new and indeed a revolutionary form of music. It's not the public's fault that they have been fed through uh, popular music and, and junk for a whole century of electronics that they have, you know, three chords in their brains. Please, Schoenberg is, is one of the great men of uh, Western society. I know, it's like those people who blame Mies van der Rohe for every bad modern building. It's not his fault. <laughs> uh, David Dubal, D-U-B-A-L's uh, latest book, The Essential Canon uh, of Classical Music, is published by North Point Press. Uh, you have a show on WQXR nowadays. Yes. Reflections from the keyboard, the piano and comparative performance. Uh, you very obviously trying to educate the public about musical interpretation. Do you have any sense of the age of your audience? Yes. Uh, first of all, I have at Juilliard, of course, the whole young generation of pianists, which uh, I hope I'm influencing in the proper way through making them hear 
recordings of the great pianists that were born so far uh, before they were born. Uh, on WQXR, uh, frankly, I, I am so happy with the response to Reflections from the Keyboard heard every uh, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I'm glad and you got that in. I, I wanted to. And uh, it's uh, it's so dear to me because at WNCN I was doing a comparative performance program in, in the 70s, which till this day I could walk on the street and someone will say, oh, that program you did five years ago. They think it's five years, it's <laughs> 25. Uh, I'm so glad it's back. And it's back in a, uh, uh, in a way that... Uh, um, gives uh, a public a chance to, in in the world of miniatures, I'm not trying to play three-minute pieces to keep them going. Sometimes we will have four and five performances or eight performances of a Chopin prelude. And what is happening is what I always want to happen. People are writing in, emailing, writing me and saying, oh, oh we know the piece. Can you tell me, was that Courteau who played it? I missed it. And so this kind of connoisseurship, you know, for performance is very exciting. Because that's one of the things that all the consultants have said audiences don't want. They don't want historic recordings. They don't want manoral well, recordings, everything is, which is, is outrageous yeah. considering all of the great music that's been captured. We we have Rachmaninoff playing piano on record. Does yeah. You couldn't play them on some... He cannot be played on some radio station? Well, he's played on, on my show all the time. I mean, we're talking about tomorrow night. We'll have 17 pianists in a one-hour show and there will be uh, 14 of them dead and 14 among the greatest of the Golden Age pianists. And this happens all the time. And no one is uh, telling me not to do it. And no one is saying, uh, gee, they're only saying, keep more going. I hope this program goes on and on. And of course, it's a commercial station, so I pray that too. But uh, you must be disheartened on another level. Oh, Most yes. of the, the major labels have pretty much cut down on their recording schedules. We see records like Golden Piano Music or Mozart you can jog, jog to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new compilation called The Top 40 Classical Pieces of the Millennium. Leonard, we're, li we're living in barbarian times when it comes to art. I'm saying that within my world, I, I haven't been defeated yet. That's all. Mm. Uh, the defeat is, is, is coming terribly. When I uh, asked Ned Rorm for the, a blurb for the book, which he gave me and I'm happy for, I said to him, I said, well, Ned, I really think that the, the world is ready for this book. I think it'll sell 70 copies. And he said, <laughs> he said David, that many? <laughs> So, of course, there's a cynicism and there is a, uh, a, a desperation. Uh, there's uh, uh, certainly parents are not saying to their children, you know, we want you to become artists in any rank. You know, poetry is worse off than music because music has performers. Uh, uh, painting is worse off. Do you, do you know anyone that's a painter these days of your friends? And do they have any possibility of, of making money? At least there's a possibility for someone to still play a concert. You mean young yeah. painters? Because yeah. I do know... A some pretty famous established ones, but well, I didn't you, meet your them friend was like, Picasso. But I yeah, mean, <laughs> Pablo calls all the time. Uh, still, have you, you? You must have thought about why, uh, with this incredible list that you have here, these amazing composers uh, and this rich tradition. Why the baby boomers? I think that's the first generation mm -hmm. stopped making that move from popular music to classical music? Well, first of all, the, um, the record companies would not concentrate on anything but Elvis Presley and uh, the junk that followed. And when I say junk, it doesn't mean that there's never been a good piece of rock and roll. If it's played to me, my critical mind will understand it's good. But the majority of this is nothing but commerce and there's uh it's explained in the book uh, in in different uh, places in different chapters heading the uh, modernism such as there was a great expendable uh, amount of income that the young had in the 50s and 60s and they were told to buy this rot and they have continued buying it uh, as the rot got worse and worse louder and louder and we have uh malls that that play mozart concertos now to keep loitering to a minimum but <laughs> yes, uh, to keep people away. Yeah. But uh, it, you you have uh, a fair number of musical pieces that you've discussed here. Would I still, despite the the total deterioration of our society, be able to go to a well stocked record store and find most of this? Uh, absolutely. This will still be able to be findable in many uh, areas, um, and all of these pieces have been. Um, 
the recordings are there the uh the pieces are described the essential works it's a it's a very serious work uh and there's no compromising with it it will um it, it will indeed uh let people that know nothing of classical music be aware of it in, in an easy way and it will be a uh, Definitely a, a piece of reference work for anyone that wants to. Oh yes, there is a piece by Tchaikovsky. Does Dubal have that as a canon work or is mm -hmm. it a starred work? The starred works in the uh, principal work section for each composer is very important to me because that says, hey, this is also a masterpiece. It just is not performed enough. Although you have to obviously try to be fair to to composers whose work just doesn't touch you. Everybody has Absolutely. personal taste. You may hate Tchaikovsky and yet know that you have to include... Leonard, I trust him. nobody that does not like Tchaikovsky. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I was using a personal example there. But, uh, okay, they're, they're, <laughs> they've got to be certain composers that you like more than others, yeah. and yet you have to do something that serves the full history yes. of Western and music. I, and I think I did it very uh, um, precisely to my conscience. Um, of course, temperamental affinity plays a great deal, but I would never let it control the book. The book structure and what really is a masterpiece counts. All right, perhaps someone will say, gee, you had more on Roussel than on Carl Nielsen. Mm -hmm. uh, too much on Duca. All of these things have no meaning to me. Or, gee, why didn't you play this? Rec uh, use this recording as an example? I, I don't care. The point is, is that each of these were, were suggestions that I thought were valuable recording-wise, and in the sense of where Duca or Roussel or Zanakis or when, wherever they are placed historically, because I always think of myself as a historian, I do not think that I have been unfair to anyone. Yes, of course, Beethoven, the central uh, figure in, in Western uh, classicism, is you know is is you know always with us, and he's more with us than when he was alive. Of course, most people wouldn't even know about Dukas these days if. Yeah. Not for Walt Disney. Uh, yeah. David Dubal, uh, according to one of our listeners, and I'm sure that this person is right, that his show is the best thing on WQXR these days. The book is called The Essential Canon, Classical Music, published by North Point Press. And here's one of America's greats, Charles Ives. Mm-hmm. <laughs>